Hello, second graders. I hope you're ready for a great story. The genre is fiction. I want you to think about, is it realistic fiction or fantasy fiction as we are reading through the story? The story is called Not Norman, A Goldfish Story. It's by Kelly Bennett and illustrated by Noah Z. Jones. The essential question this week is still the same. How can a pet be an important friend? Read about a boy who has a special pet fish. Now on this page, I'm gonna ask you to do something before we even, just start re we even start reading. I want you to infer something. Infer means when you take clues that you may see or hear, and you put it together with things that you already know. Based on this drawing or the picture, the illustration, you should be able to infer something about the day that is happening in this picture. A special day. I hope you are able, able to infer that it's probably a birthday, right? We see the party hats, we see the candles, and it's probably the kid's birthday because we see what one of the presents is and those little things you go, whoa, and you blow out the candles. So, and it looks like one of the presents might be a fish and it is called a goldfish story. All right, so thank you for practicing using your inferencing to infer about this. Let's get ready to enjoy the story, not Norman. When I got Norman, I didn't want to keep him. I wanted a different kind of pet, not Norman. I wanted a pet who could run and catch, or one who could climb trees and chase strings. A soft, furry pet to sleep on my bed at night not Norman. All Norman does is swim, or swim around and 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 around. This is it, Norman, I decide. I'm trading you for a good pet. Norman doesn't move. Not even a fin twitches. How can I trade him like this? No one will want a sorry looking fish in a gunky bowl. When I drop Norman into his nice clean bowl, he starts dipping and flipping, flapping his fins around. He looks so goofy, I have to laugh. Don't think that just because you made me laugh, I'm going to keep you, I tell him. Tomorrow, you're out of here. Norman blows a stream of bubbles. The next day, I take Norman to school with me. If I talk him up real good during show and tell, maybe somebody will want him. On the way there, we see my friend Austin. Austin has a real cool dog and seven puppies. Want to swap one of your pups for Norman? I ask. Who's Norman? asks Austin. My goldfish, I say. By the time I rescue Norman, half his water is gone. I'm sorry, I tell Norman when we get to school. I'm really sorry. He just stares at me, all googly-eyed. Finally, it's my turn at show and tell. Just as I start to talk about goldfish, Emily shouts, Jenny's gone! Who let my snake loose? Norman. One amazing fish. <laughs> that picture tells a lot of the story, doesn't it? There's a lot of things in the pictures here that 
they don't say it exactly in the words, so you don't want to look at all these pictures. They're so good. Does anyone hear the story of how I got Norman? Does anyone even ask to hold his bowl? No, they're all jumping and screaming and chasing the snake. Not Norman. He's looking right at me. Thanks for listening, I tell him. So again, you want to visualize and think about what's happening in the story. Ask and answer questions. You ask the question and you answer it for yourself. It's a reading strategy. Here's the question. Why doesn't anyone listen to the boy telling his story about his stories about Norman? Think about if you know who was lost. It's interesting. We still have to call him the boy because we do not know that character's name. Even though they're the narrator and they're telling us everything that's happening, we do not know their name yet. Maybe we'll never will. That afternoon, we go to my music lesson. As soon as it's over, I'm taking Norman back to the pet store. I take out my tuba and begin to play. I glance over at Norman. He is swaying back and forth. Glue, 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 glug. He mouths. Look, Norman is singing, I say. Pay attention, snaps Maestro, and try to play the proper notes. Maestro makes me stay for extra practice. By the time my lesson is over, it's too late to go to the pet store. Don't think that just because you like my music, I'm going to keep you, I tell Norman. He glugs. Glug, glug. That night, I'm sound asleep when screech, screech. What's that noise? Scratch, screech, screech. Yikes, there's something at the window. Then out of the corner of my eye, I spot Norman. He isn't scared. He isn't swimming around in circles either. He glugs and gives me a little wave. I'm not alone. Together, Norman and I slide open the curtains. It was just a broken tree branch. Whew. Thanks for watching out for me, Norman. Visualize. How does Norman help the boy not feel alone? Use the visualize strategy to help you. Visualize waking up and you're hearing a strange sound and your eyes look and there's some fish eyes looking back at you and there's a little wave. Mm. On Saturday, I take Norman to the pet store just like I said I would. I look at the cats and dogs and snakes and birds. I look at the hamsters and mice and lizards too. They all look like good pets, but they are not Norman. When I got Norman, I wasn't sure I wanted to keep him. But now, even if I could pick any pet in the whole world, I wouldn't trade him. Not Norman. Norman, one amazing fish. Found the author and illustrator. Kelly Bennett wrote Not Norman because of her own pet goldfish. I write what I know about friendship, pets, family life, says Kelly, but I also write about things I want to know about. She gets ideas from adventures with her family. Noah Z. Jones currently lives in sunny Los Angeles, California with his family. He has illustrated many books. Now he is working on a cartoon series. Author's Purpose Kelly uses words such as boom, bomb, bomb, ba. These words sound like a tuba. Using words that sound like the object or action they refer to is called onomatopoeia. 
What other sound words does Kelly use to tell the story? Screech, scratch, scritch. Those are all onomatopoeia words. They sound like the word, just like boom and pop are onomatopoeia words. They sound like the thing, the sound they're making. <laughs> onomatopoeia, very fun. After finishing the story, Not Norman, a goldfish story, you can see how the title ties into the story because we keep hearing a repeated phrase. A phrase is not a sentence, it's just some words, and the words, you know them, they're not Norman. And so that's one of the tricks that authors use in a story is to keep using the same phrase again and again. And that certainly happened in this story, not Norman. And it made it the title, but it also helped you to know um, how the boy was feeling. And we kind of saw the changes happen in his emotions. So in this story, the character of the boy has a change of heart. He changes his opinions about something throughout the story. His point of view changes as the story goes on. I think that's really interesting. Think about how the boy felt at the beginning of the story, towards Norman, the middle of the story, and by the end of the story. And you can see his feelings toward Norman have changed. I hope you enjoyed Not Norman, a goldfish story, as much as I do.